Hello everyone, I am Sanket Singh and welcome back to my channel. So guys, in this particular video, we are going to start our discussion on arrays in JavaScript. Arrays are one of the most fundamental and very important concepts of programming, whether it is JavaScript or any other programming language. We are going to take a very deep dive into understanding what are arrays and how it can actually be helpful to you. So without any further delay, let's just start. But before starting the video, if you have not yet subscribed to the channel, do consider subscribing to the channel. We are going to put some really awesome content up ahead. So let's just start. So guys, before moving forward, there is a very important information that I would like to give you. So recently we wrapped our Elite 1.0 Frontend Development course and now we have launched our Elite 2.0 Advanced Frontend Development course. This is a bigger and a better front-end development course that you need. This course doesn't need any particular prerequisite and we are going to take you from the very beginner level to the advanced level of front-end engineering. We have actually included projects like your own Repelit clone, Wix, Wix website maker clone, right? Uber clone and a lot of similar projects. You are going to make your own PubSub library based LLD driven projects and we are going to make sure that you learn important front-end design patterns as well. I'm going to list down all the projects and all the important design patterns here. This is the only course that you need if you are aiming for SD1 or SD2 or SD3 kind of roles because we are going to take everything to the very advanced level in front-end engineering. We are going to learn a lot of optimizations and we are going to see technologies like Next.js, Redux, Zustand, TypeScript, React and of course the latest version of react this particular course is going to make sure that you have ample amount of projects that you can add in your resume we are going to make approximately 20 plus projects with different variety of complexities engineering problems and of course there will be a lot of discussion around the core concepts of frontend so what are you waiting for check out the course link in the description below and you can use the coupon code mentioned in the description section to get maximum discount possible see you guys in the cohort and let's get back to the video So now let's start our discussion on arrays. Arrays are going to be one of the most uh, important uh, topic that you are going to actually uh, learn in your programming journey, right? A lot of things are dependent in a lot of applications on arrays, right? Whether you do algorithmic problem solving, whether you build softwares, arrays is going to be something that is going to be always used at a lot of places right so what are arrays the biggest question that should come to your mind is what are arrays like what do you mean by this term arrays what do you mean by this term arrays right so let's take an example let's take an example let's say Let's say we have to we have to store hundred numbers. Right. We have to store hundred numbers somewhere. Right. What is one way that you can do? One simple way that you might be able to think about is you will make hundred different variables, and in each variable you are going to store these hundred different numbers. That is going to be a lot more problematic. Right, that's going to be problematic because how we will maintain 100 variables, 100 is a big number. And let's say if at some point of time, I want to store 10 raised to the power 5 numbers or let's say 10 raised to the power 8 numbers, then how we will maintain 10 raised to the power 5 different variables, right? And this can be definitely a use case for us. Let me give you an example for let, let's say that we are analyzing, let's say we are analyzing stock price right stock price of a particular stock and let's say the stock price we are we have to analyze for last one year we have to analyze this stock price for last one year so we will be having the data of the stock price and let's say we are having the average price of each day for the last one year or you can say 365 days right 365 working days where actually stock price fluctuates right so for the last 365 days we have the data so are we going to store this data in 365 different variables? Of course not, right? We need some mechanism. We need some mechanism in which if we have to store large number of data, then we can somehow store it. Then we can somehow store it. Okay. So 
that's where arrays come into the picture that's where arrays come into the picture right so if we talk about arrays these are or let's say arrays can be arrays can be described as a data structure as a data structure that can store collection of data in a linear in a linear contiguous uh, i would say orientation in the memory now this might look a lot more technical to you i have written a lot of new statements that might look technical to you what is a data structure right what do we do i mean when i say collection of data what do i mean when i say linear contiguous orientation in the memory a lot of things i just said right so let's try to understand each term but before we actually do this i hope everyone is able to understand the problem statement that we have in our hand that we have to store a lot of data and i gave you an example right that we are st analyzing stock price of last 365 days the average stock price per day so how we have to we have to somehow store it then we will be able to analyze it right how we will store it that's something that we have to figure out so let's first of all talk about this term data structure let's first of all talk about the term data structure what is data structures right what is data structures so these are different structures that we can prepare that we can prepare to store data in different fashion or let's say different ways depending on our use case depending on our use case for example for example let's say if we have to store hierarchy based data for example we have to somehow store a family tree kind of a thing or let's say we have to store folder structure like folder structure is hierarchy right you can see that in your windows system there is c drive inside your c drive there are like multiple folders music movies documents downloads right then inside downloads you have multiple files file f1 f2 f3 then in document you have multiple folders folder 1 folder 2 let's say there are some files also let's say f5 file inside folder 2 there can be few more files f7 right similar to this right so this is also a hierarchy based structure right then inside one of your drive you have different folders in each folder there can be more folders so it's a hierarchy based structure if you have to represent a hierarchy based structure then we have a data structure called as trees which can help us to represent hierarchy based structure right so as i said data structures are different structures or you can say kind of like mind map right that we actually prepare the unorientation in our mind that how the data should look like how we have to handle the data and then based on that orientation based on that use case we are going to prepare some different kind of orientation to store that in the memory because we have to eventually store the data in the memory right so if we want to represent this hierarchical structure how we are going to store the data in the memory so that we can represent the hierarchical structure so for that we can prepare a tree based tree based data structure right so there are a lot of data structure for example trees there is something called as linked list arrays is, is one of the data structure there is something called a stack right so there are different data structures that are actually available right so when i say arrays can be described as a data structure that means that arrays is also a special type of structure that can store the data in a particular fashion for example trees can store hierarchical data arrays will also store some specific type of orientation of data when we say orientation then how we actually have to actually represent the data 
rather than what the data is we are not going to focus on what the data is because data can be different for example hierarchy tree can be family tree also or this folder structure tree also but how the data is going to be represented data structure just focuses on how the data is going to be represented rather than what data is going to be represented why we actually answer this how because based on how we actually represent the data or store the data can help us in different use cases right now talking about arrays as a data structure talking about arrays as a data structure arrays actually store data in a linear contiguous orientation in the memory in the memory right so let's say this is the memory that has been allocated to your process let's say we got 1 gb of memory allocated to our process right so let's say there are some variables let's say let x is equals to 10 so how x is equals to 10 might look like there will be a bucket kind of a thing which will be the variable this is the label of the variable this is the value of the variable whereas if you have to create an array the array will look something like this so it's going to allocate contiguous memory location so this was one memory location right but if array takes a bit of like if array is initialized it is going to take multiple different memory locations which are actually linear one after another one after another it's not like one data will be like we have to store a lot of data right let's say we have to store 100 numbers so it's not like one day one number will be stored here next number will be stored here next number will be stored here no if you have to start storing the numbers or whatever data you have to actually store it always in a linear fashion in the memory you have to always store it in the linear fashion in the memory that is the essence of arrays right and it is always going to consume contiguous memory space right you see if you start preparing an array this is a 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 if let's say this is an array this is an array of length 7 right so it is going to take 7 consecutive buckets it is going to take 7 contiguous buckets without interruption and then we can actually store data inside this array right so we can store data like this 68044 right so now if you see this number 10 if i do let's say one more variable let y is equals to 20 so this y might be made here but if you make an array and you store let's say seven elements in, inside it then those elements are always going to be present one after another in a contiguous fashion let's say first the bucket 3 followed by the bucket 1 followed by bucket of minus 2 followed by bucket of 6 and so on and so forth this is the essence of arrays this is the essence of array that you always consume contiguous memory locations you are never going to do something like this this is not arrays this is not arrays this is arrays this is arrays it's always expected to be contiguous in nature right now you might think that okay it is contiguous in nature so can you give an example so that we can actually visualize that if at a, in a real life example we have to use arrays what can be a good real life example where we actually use this contiguous orientation of memory because here you can see folder structure is a good example for trees but what example can i give for this so i have a really interesting example which is a very good real life example that you can see for the application of arrays so if i want to give you one of the best examples of the application of arrays then the one of the best example of the application of arrays is, are images so everyone must have clicked images from your phone or actually cameras different things right and there are different type of images also for example let's say you just shoot simple pictures from your mobile phones but there are satellite images also right that is actually shot by from the satellites right so there are different use cases of images also if I talk about a simple image that you generally click from your phone, your image is actually a collection of arrays. What collection of arrays? Let me show you. So actually the image that you see is not just a one 2D image. 
It's not one two dimensional figure that you actually see. It is actually a combination of an all red, all green and all blue. So there are actually three layers that are involved in the image. These layers are called as channels. These layers are called as channels. So this is actually red channel. This is green. This is blue. Okay, these are channels. Okay, what do you mean by channels? If you see, if you see this particular blue image, this is all blue, right? This is either it's all black or it's all blue. Can I say that? It's all black or it's all blue. So if you just see this particular part, if you just see this particular part, then this particular part is nothing but different small pixels of blue color. Different small pixels of blue color, right? You must have heard about pixel, like the smallest component that you actually see on the screen, right? Small pixels. So these are actually small, small pixel values. So they can be represented as something like this. So if you see, this is one array, this is another array. So if I draw an array in front of you, if I draw an array in front of you, right? Then this looks like a 1D structure, right? It looks like a one dimensional structure. It is going in one dimension. But if you place multiple arrays, one behind the other, then it will become a two dimensional structure. So this is actually a 2D array. This is actually a 2D array. So inside this 2D array, there are small grids. In each grid, you have a pixel value that actually represents the intensity of the pixel. So how, how much is the intensity of the blue pixel is represented inside this grid? How much intensity of green pixel is represented inside this image, inside this grid? And same for this as red. And when you place these 2D grids together, it becomes 3D array. So see, you place multiple 1D array together, it becomes a 2D array. You place multiple 2D arrays together, it will become a three dimensional structure. And this three dimensional structure is actually the image. When you overlay your red over blue over green, when all of these channels are combined, then actually you see an image. Then actually you see an image. And this is also like a for a plane image. If you go for satellite images, then there are more channels. There are channels of opacity, brightness, a lot of things are there in like complex images, right? But if you go for a simple image, this is what you do. Now you can see, right? You have a use case of storing data contiguously, right? Because in the memory, if we have to actually store this image, then I cannot just store one pixel here, one pixel here, one pixel here, one pixel here. No, because then the image will be distorted in the pixels. It will, one pixel will be represented here, one pixel will be here, one pixel will be here. No, we have to store the pixels in a contiguous fashion because this red pixel is going to overlay over this green pixel, which is going to overlay over this blue pixel. So their overlay is going to man, ma, uh, matter, right? So this orientation actually matters. So when whenever you have contiguous orientation actually mattering a lot to you, like this, arrays are going to be a really good example for this, right? Similar thing you can see here. This is a normal image, but it, this image actually has a red channel, green channel and a blue channel. So this is like RGB, right? RGB. Right. So every channel, every channel that you actually see, it's nothing. It's a collection of small grids, which is actually representing pixel values. Now, pixel values actually range from 0 to 255. Right. For example, every grid will be having a value from 0 to 255. See, like different values you are writing here. These are actually going to represent the intensity of the red color or the blue color or the green color. Right. That's actually these are going to show. So they actually act as a component plane and these component planes are actually represented by two dimensional arrays. These two dimensional arrays when combined together form a three dimensional array like this. And that you can say is one of the biggest examples of the application of arrays. That is why having a linear structure, which is having a contiguous orientation in the memory is important. Now, how do we create arrays in JavaScript, right? How do we create arrays in JavaScript? So arrays can be created in a very simple way in JavaScript. 
right there are two three ways in which we can actually create arrays so all you have to do is you can either use let var or const anything just like how you initialize a normal variable in the same way you initialize a normal variable okay so for example you can do something like let x so this is like a normal variable initialization you have to do equals to now if you want to initialize an empty array of zero length that is having no elements at all you can just put a pair of square brackets and that will initialize an empty array so this is going to be a empty array of zero length right there can be more ways to initialize an array for example let's say you can do even do where right you can even do where so let's say where uh, one second where y is equals to let's say now you don't want to initialize an empty zero length array you want to initialize with some values so let's say one two four six right and you can have in javascript you can have heterogeneous set of values let me write a note here js arrays support heterogeneous values heterogeneous means at the same point of time in the array you can store different type of data for example you can see i have stored numbers now i can even store booleans for example false then i can also store a string more booleans right i can even store something like null right so different data types can coexist together and if you see this is four five six seven eight this is an eight length array eight length array right so you have at one point of time using just one variable you have stored eight different data all together right you can even do something like this um, let's say let me give you one more example let's say you do let z is equals to a b c d d right you can have all the data types of same type also all the data of same type also this is an array of length 3 right array of length 3 right okay so you initialize array just like your normal variables right for example let where you can even say a const here right const so just like how you initialize a normal variable you will just do that you will put let var or const whatever you like a variable name and then you can initialize arrays in different ways there is one more way in which you can initialize arrays that i will tell you later right while initializing arrays you don't have to currently care about what is let var and const because we are going to discuss about let var and const when we are going to discuss about scopes right there you will understand the difference between let var and all const and everything for the timing it's just a syntactical sugar for us that can help us to actually initialize a variable in that variable the value that you are going to store is going to be the reference to the array right so let me uh, create an array in front of you and actually try to print it so that you can actually see this in action and then we will talk about a few more things around arrays which you technically already know with respect to one more different data type that has some similarities with arrays let's talk about that but first of all let's try to create an array inside javascript and see how the syntax actually works so let's try to create an array so for example you can do something like let x is equals to an empty array you can do let y is equals to one two three false a b c d e f true n n null right undefined all of the values you can store together this should be let okay and then you can have something like where z is equal so you can have all same types also a b c d e f g h i right just make sure whenever you are creating an array you bind that in the pair of square brackets that's mandatory square brackets are mandatory right and something like const arr is equals to 
1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 right and now if you try to print it console dot log x y z a right let's try to print all of them if you run it one second sorry this should be arr should be error not a you can see different values are getting printed so let me do one thing let me print them in new lines so that you can actually visualize them better console.log x console.log y console.log z console.log a right Sorry, this is ARR. Sorry, my bad again. ARR, run it. And now you can see, first of all, you have an empty array. Then you have this very big array of different elements. Then you have this array of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I. And then you have this array, right? So whenever JavaScript actually prints an array, it also prints the square bracket along with it. You can see, JavaScript also prints the square bracket along with it. So during the printing process only, you will realize that it's an array because every time just for array, JavaScript also prints the curly, uh, sorry, uh, square brackets. So this is you actually, this is how you actually initialize an array. But the biggest question uh, in that should come into your mind is, although we have stored different data inside one array, see I've stored a lot of data inside one array. How can we access individual data? Currently we are accessing the whole array, but how can we access individual data that we are going to talk about? One more question that should come that can come to your mind is why it is printing in different lines so actually it's not like it's printing in different lines it is actually just my terminal that is actually representing things to you like this if you actually go in the browser environment so if you paste the same code here if you run it, see now it is printing everything in single line, right? So it's just like uh, we don't have enough, uh, like this is how the terminal actually interprets it. Whereas if you see, it is actually printing things in the same line. So actually, it's not how you actually print it, but what you actually printed is something that we are actually concerned about. So now let's talk about, although we have stored different data values inside one array. So how you can individually access these different data values from the given array variable because you just have one variable and in that variable you have different data how can you individually access all of them is something that is uh, going to be worth a discussion now the question that is in front of us is arrays can store different values together or multiple values together but how do i access all of these values now we have seen a similar situation in one more data type that was strings in strings also you had something like a b c d e f right you have multiple characters which were just stitched together to form a string but you were able to use the mechanism of indexing to actually individually access all of those characters now this concept of indexing also exists inside arrays so individual elements of the array has got unique indexes starting from zero right so this element is going to have let's say this is the index that i'm going to write here this is going to have index zero this is going to be index one this is going to be index two this is index three index four index five similar situation just like a string Let's take one more example. Let's say A, B, C, 2, 5, 18, undefined, right? And let's say 0. So here the indexing will be 0 will be the index for A, B, C, 1 will be the index for 2, 2 will be the index for 5, 3 will be the index for 18, 4 will be the index of undefined, 5 will be the index of 0, right? So the in the similar way, how you do indexing in strings, in the similar way you do indexing inside arrays and the best part is not only just this in the same way how we used to actually extract individual characters from a string 
in the same way you can extract individual values from the arrays for example this array is arr so what you can do you can do something like arr of 4 this is going to return you this value 5 here let's say you have this as array is equals to this if you do array of 3 it is going to return your value 18 right it is going to return your value 18 so in the similar way how you used to access the indexes of a string in the similar way you can access indexes of an array right now there is one very crucial difference between strings and arrays right let's say let's say that you have a string like sanket okay indexes are 0 1 2 3 4 5 let's say str is equals to sanket whereas whereas you have an array arr is equals to 0 minus 1 3 8 2 okay something like this if you have to access the data if you have to access data then inside strings you can just do let's say str of 2 and you will get the n inside arrays if you will do arr of 2 you will immediately get 3 or if you do arr of uh, 4 you will immediately get 2 right this is how you access the data but if you want to update the data if you want to update the data then inside strings if you try to do something like let's say str of 0 is equals to b this is not possible you cannot update strings you cannot update a value present at the index of a string whereas you can do it in arrays for example if you do arr of 2 is equals to 11 this is possible this is possible what will happen the moment you will hit arr of 2 is equals to 11 so let's say 0 1 2 3 4 on index number 2 you will update this value as 11 so updation is possible inside arrays but not in string updation is possible inside arrays but not strings right but not strings that is why that is why a lot of at a lot of places you will find that people say that strings in javascript are immutable immutable means they cannot mutate they cannot mutate means they cannot change right you have to create a new string altogether if you have to make some change you cannot change the already prepared strings whereas arrays in javascript are mutable right that means the values present at different indexes of the array you can change those values right you can update those values that will happen for example if i actually show you mutability and immutability dot js so if i create a string let str is equals to sanket if you try to do something like str of 0 is equals to let's say b and if i do console dot log str if i run it you can see it, did, it didn't change the string sanket right it didn't change the string sanket whereas if you do something like this let arr is equals to 9192156 and you do arr of 3 is equals to 1121 and now you do console.log arr if you run it you can see Previously, it was 5 that was present on index 3. Now, it is 1, 1, 2, 1 that is present on index 3. What does it signify? It signifies that strings are immutable. Hence, don't update. Arrays are mutable. Hence, they get updated. Okay. So this is the basic difference between indexing of strings and indexing of arrays otherwise a lot of concepts are same in both of the way both of the things that 
how you actually do the indexing both of them are zero based index and how you actually access the data is technically same in both of the situations so this is a new question in front of us and this will help us to actually just play around with arrays so that we can get more familiar uh, with the use cases of arrays right so the question says that you have been given an array which only contains 0 and 1 so you will only contain either a 0 or a 1 value the data can be shuffled randomly so you can have a data like this like there is no particular orientation in which it is uh, represented but everything is either a 0 or a 1 that is for sure write a function that can rearrange the data such that all zeros are present before 1 right you have to somehow represent this data such that all the zeros are present before one the condition is you cannot create a new array and you don't have to like use any internal function also and you can read or i would say traverse on the array only once you cannot like again and again travel on the array like first of all read the array and then travel again on the array and update it you cannot do that you have to do it in a single pass and if your final output should be your the same array should be rearranged like this because we have the property of mutability in array so it makes sense to like if possible re rearrange it in the same array so that we can avoid considering any extra array that can help us to save a bit of memory how can we do this so one simple solution that you can have here is one simple solution that we can have here is we can read the whole array and we can prepare two variables count a or let's say count one count zero while reading the array we can check whether the current element is one if the current element is one we can increment the count of one if the current element is zero we can increment the count of zero we can read the whole array and then travel on the array again and then first of all whatever number of zeros were there in the array we will keep on filling that many number of zeros and after that we can keep on filling that many number of ones but the problem with this approach is you are traveling over the array twice you don't have to do it okay how can we do this now just think about it now just think about it let's say what is your final expectation what is your final expectation my final expectation should is that in this left region in this left region there should be all zeros there should be all zeros and in this right region it should be all ones right and in between let's expand it a bit and in between let's say we have shuffled elements one zero one zero okay we have a bit of shuffling shuffling of the elements so what do we want let's say these elements are already arranged such that all of the zeros are on the left these elements already have all of the right ones on the right and we are let's say on this one now what we want we want to throw this one in the right region then we have this zero we want to throw this zero in the left region then this one should be thrown in the right region this zero should be thrown in the left region can i say that we have to technically do the bucketing right we have to keep all of the zeros separate all of the ones separate so that at last these regions actually expand to the full array this is the expectation right for example if you have this one what do you want you want to send this one to the right region then you want to send this zero to the left region then you want to send this one also to the right region and you want to send this zero also to the left region and hence we will be having all the zeros to the left of all the ones this is the expectation how can i do it so let's say let's assume that this is a window and this is also a window and let's say there are two variables i and j what are i and j i comma j represent indexes right they represent indexes what indexes before i everything is a zero see 
बिफोर आई एवरीथिंग इज अ जीरो कैन आई से दैट एंड आफ्टर जे एवरीथिंग इज अ वन यू कैन सी आफ्टर जे एवरीथिंग इज अ वन बट बिफोर आई बिटवीन आई एंड जे थिंग्स कैन बी शपल दैट वी हैव टू रिजोल्व कैन आई से दैट कैन आई से दैट सो before i we have all zeros before and after j we have all ones why i am defining it like this you might think that why i am defining these terms and these indexes like this because we want to create a window all the indexes of an array always start with zero right so let's say this is index 0 1 2 3 technically this is index 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 11 so you can see that i is pointing to index 4 that means from 0 to 3 all of the zeros are already there so we have a window of length 4 which is already having all of the zeros and after j that is after index 7 that is from 8 to arr dot length minus 1 we have all the ones but between 4 to 7 we have elements shuffled so we are able to like segregate out the buckets we are able to segregate out the left bucket and the right bucket using these i and j like we can prepare a mental model out of it now what can we do what can we do now let's see you can take any one of the index variable and try to read with it for example if you see i is pointing to a 1 should we have a 1 here if it would have been a 0 here just think about it if it would have been a 0 here then i could have just incremented i to index 5 because everything to the left of i is all zeros let me repeat again if instead of 1 we could have got a 0 i could have just simply incremented i to i plus 1 and everything to the left of i would have become 0 right so we could have inserted one more zero in the left region but this is not a zero this is a 1 this one should go where to the right region right so how about how about if let's say you have a value at j you have a value at j see you, j must be pointing to something and similar case will happen with j also right if j would be pointing to 1 then i could have just done j minus 1 and everything to the right of j will include all ones so this one will get included in the right window can i say that so what can i do let's see if i is pointing to a 1 let's swap let's swap value at i and j right if if i is pointing at 1 let's swap the values at i and j right this is 1 you might think what will happen after swapping what will happen after swapping let's see if to if you swap these values 0 will come here 1 will come here right see if you before swapping this was the orientation you detected you detected that i is pointing at 1 i don't know what j is pointing at i will just check for i is equals to 1 i'll just check this if i or you can say arr of i is equals to 1 i will just check this i don't know whether j is having a 1 or j is having a 0 i don't know but i have definitely know that i is pointing to a 1 if i is pointing to the 1 then we definitely know that we need to put it to the right variable right there will be cases but when both of them will point to one i will come to those cases but for the time being if i is pointing to one just swap them just swap them if you have swapped them then i don't know what came to index i it could have been zero or one also but i am definitely sure that one came at index j i am definitely sure that one came at index j and if one came at index j all i can do is just do j minus minus or i can say j minus equals to 1 anything after swapping after swapping right i can do j minus minus so what will happen j will start pointing to index 6 that means you have included this one also in the right region can i say that can i say that right simple case right let me show you again let me show you again so 
if let's say there was a one here and there was a zero here all we have to do is just detect what is i pointing to i is pointing to one i don't know what j is pointing to i don't know what is j is pointing to i won't even i don't even want to check why because i am sure i is pointing to one i am sure i is pointing to one that means i can swap the values i can swap the values and then just do j minus minus that means we can just make this whole go here and technically we have everything to the right of j is all ones so everything to the right of j is all ones good enough right now you see again what is i pointing to i is pointing to zero now we don't need to swap anything or do anything right because i can just do i plus equals to one see if arr of i is equals to zero just do i plus plus right because everything to the left of i should be zero can i say that again you have a zero just do i plus plus because everything to the left of i should be all zeros right now let's see one more case let's see one more case how about you have something like this how about you have something like this i is pointing to one j is also pointing to one and let's say you have zero one okay cool now i is pointing to one what did i say if i is pointing to one swap the values i don't even want to check what do we have at j i don't even want to check just swap the values so this one comes here this one comes here right and then i do j minus minus okay now you will again check the value of i you will again check the value of i it is again a one you don't even want to check what is there at j you just swap and then just do j minus minus now you might be thinking why i am doing this even if the value of j is one why i am not just doing j minus minus directly because even if even if j is also having a one like in the previous case j was also having a one right even if j is having a one i is also having a one it doesn't matter right in the next iteration in the next iteration when you do after you do j minus minus in the next iteration you will again detect a one and sometime somewhere down the line i will come at j will come at zero at that moment of time you will see okay i is pointing to one so up again and do j minus minus and now i and j point at the same variable and you can see now what is i pointing at i is pointing at zero if i is pointing at zero you just do i plus plus and everything to the left of i is all zeros everything to the right of j is all ones and hence you can see that i have segregated out all the zeros and ones so my point let me summarize i said let's try to prepare a window let's try to prepare a window such that you have two indexes i and j you have two indexes i and j before i you have all zeros after j you have all ones okay now you can pick any one variable as the dominant one i have currently picked i you will check is i pointing to a zero or a one if let's say i is pointing to a zero i don't need to do anything right i can just do i plus plus i will come here because everything to the left of i is all zeros so i just do i plus one i don't need to do any other operation but let's let's say if i is one then i can swap it with the value of j because doesn't matter whether j has a zero or a one j needs a one so let's say if it has a zero you will provide a one to it and get a zero from here even if it has a one then you provide this one here and this one here it will swap one and one only and then i do j minus minus so j will come here right everything to the right of j is all ones and somewhere down the line j will come at zero you again gave i a value one with the previous swap now you again do the swapping and this time i will get a zero and j will get a one right so you again do j minus minus so let's see let's see if you have i as one you just swap it to the value of j so let's swap it i guess swapping logic is going to be simple and do j minus minus see we do j minus minus okay now again we check is the value of i as one yes now you see j is providing a zero to i 
and now we do j minus minus now is the value of i is 1 no the value of i is 0 that means all you have to do is just i plus plus again I, the value of i is 0 all you have to do is i plus plus and i comes here the moment i and j passes to each other everything to the right of j is 1 everything to the left of i is all zeros and hence we have done the segregation so technically this algorithm is based on bucketing like you see a value and you throw it either to the right bucket or the left bucket you saw the value with respect to i if the value was zero you threw it in the left bucket how you threw it you just expand the bucket technically either you like manually throw it or technically saying you just expand the bucket if you saw value one then you technically threw the value and then expanded the bucket this is a simple algorithm using which you can see i have just read the whole array once i didn't do any counting i didn't do any sorting i didn't create a new array and we have separated all zeros and one so if i want to write a code for it if i want to write a code for it separate 0 and 1 dot js so i can write a function separate it will take an array right now we know right like arrays work similar to strings so the starting index is going to be 0 and the ending index is going to be arr dot length minus 1 now why starting index should be 0 starting index is 0 because let's say you have an array like, array like this okay now i is pointing here and j is pointing here now what did i say everything to the left of i and technically we have not separated anything the algorithm has not started so i will keep i as zero because if i is at index zero everything to the left of i is already all zeros and there is nothing to the left of i right so that makes sense and everything to the right of j is all ones there is nothing to the right of j because nothing has started and then you say while i is less than or equal to j while both of them are either less than each other or equal to each other that means till the time i and j have not passed each other what will i check we will check if arr at i is equals to a one we will actually swap so let's write a function to swap in the swap function i will pass an index i and index j i guess swapping logic everybody knows right you can create a temp variable In, inside this temp variable you can store arr of i then inside arr of i you can just store arr of j and inside arr of j you can store the temp back similar to swapping two variables you can swap two indexes right just treat arr at i as one variable arr at j as another variable and similar swapping algorithm and now we can even call swap arr comma i comma j right and then we can do j minus minus that is include the new one we threw in the right window okay and here we can say that we just check we just check if we have one at index i doesn't matter what we have at j what we have at j otherwise if i is not one that means i is having a value zero i'll just do i plus plus that is expand the left window directly okay that's it that's it right so what you can do is you can say let arr is equals to 11101001 okay and you can say separate arr so this is going to transform our original array and now let's try to print the array console.log arr if you run it you can see all of the zeros are to the left and all of the ones are to the right and hence we have solved this question with this simple loop and 
this is going to give us a good amount of exploration for actually playing with arrays, accessing the indexes, accessing the values, updating the values. So technically like we are updating the values here, we are accessing values everywhere, we are accessing the indexes, so on and so forth. So this is a very beautiful question to actually get our hands dirty on arrays. Let's try to do a quick dry run. If you start the dry run, okay, let's see. So if you carefully see, this is the array, right? This is the whole array, which is with us. Let's do this. Okay. We have a variable I and J. I is equals to zero. J is equals to 10. Is zero less than equal to 10? Yes. Is ARR at zero equals to one? Yes. So you swap it right so you will swap both the values so both the values are one nothing will happen and then you do j minus minus j became nine okay now again i is at index zero which is technically this index j is pointing to uh sorry i is at index zero which is pointing to one j is at index nine which is pointing to zero again is arr at i equals to one yes swap again now carefully see this one will actually get swapped with this, this zero. See, array updated, right? You actually change the value and then do J minus minus. Okay. Now is I less than equal to J? Yes. So I is already pointing to a zero. See, so I'll just do I plus plus. I is now one. Now I is at this index. J is at this index. Again, swapping will happen. Nothing will change. J minus minus. Then again, swapping will happen and this time 0 and 1 will get swapped. See, 0 and 1 get swapped and then we do J minus minus and so on. This is how you actually can debug and see how things are actually swapping and you are expanding the left window and the right window. So when we started learning loops, I told you that there were like two, three different type of loops. There are a few more type of loops that you can learn about. So with respect to arrays, with respect to arrays or let's say strings, there is something called as a for of loop. For of loop. Right. What is a for of loop? For example, let's say you have an array like 10, 11, 15, 20. You have a four length array. Currently, what do you do? You currently write something like for let i equals to 0, i less than arr dot length, something like this, right? So array also has a length property. Now, instead of this, instead of this, like this old type of loop that you are applying inside a for loop, it's actually based on indexes. What for of loop does actually is, you can write something like for, you can write something like for and then you can say const value of arr something like this and then let's say you do console.log value so what will happen is inside this value parameter in every iteration you will directly get the access to the value you don't need to get the access of the value through the index. Like currently you do something like ARR of I where I is the index and then you get the access of the value. Using this loop, you will directly get access of the value. You don't need to participate with the help of an index. So if I show you an example, let's say you have an array. Okay. You do something like for const value. You can write any variable name. You can say value. You can say val any variable name. Then you write the keyword of and then you say arr and you do console.log val. Right. If you run it, if you run it, you can see we are able to print all the values. You don't need to go into the indexes, right? You don't need to go into the indexes. Now you might be, you might be thinking, can we do only do const? Can we do let? How about you try it? If you run it, 
see even with let it is working can we do it with var see with var also it's working so it's like you just have to put a variable here then use the keyword off and then the name of the array and things will be good to go for you if you try to debug it if you try to debug it and actually see what's happening so let's see so you have this array see you have this array variable array which is of length 5 okay and then you have this val variable initially which is undefined because we are just barely starting the loop okay cool now in the first iteration you see val is having a value 10 we will print it in the next iteration val is having a value 11 which is the next value in the next iteration it is having 14 in the next iteration it is 120 in the next iteration it is minus 1 and that's it the array has ended and done so you don't need to actually keep a track of the length of the array or keep track of indexes you can do something like this and similar thing you can do with strings also if you do sunke for const character of str you can do console log dot log character as i said any variable name you can put here if you try to run it you can see s a n k a t gets printed right in separate line because each individual index you are able to separately access so it's like a shorthand right it's like a shorthand shorthand means you don't need to keep a track of the length you don't need to keep a track of the indexes if indexes doesn't matter to you for the, your corresponding problem you can just use a for off loop for example if you just have to print the array no point of doing let i equals to zero i less than this i plus plus and then do arr of i it's a quite a shorter syntax and quite feasible to use and less error prone also because let's say you somehow wrote the wrong condition of i less than or i greater than something then it can create problems right whereas a loop like this is much more cleaner so this can be one more way in which you can actually traverse over arrays or strings so let's try to discuss a few more things around objects because that's going to give us a good uh, concept around what to do and where to use objects actually right now we already talked about the fact that objects are like javascript object data type is kind of like a key value pair it's kind of like a key value pair right so how do you initialize an object you do something like let's say let x is equal to you put a pair of curly braces and then key value pairs for example name is the key and then sanket is the value then age is the key and 24 number is the value or you can have let y is equal to you can even do this in multiple lines name sarthak age 24 right comma separated so every key value pair is comma separated and after the key you have to put a colon this is a colon right so this is how you actually create an object now how to access key value pairs let's say if you want to now access a key value pair or let's say try to update it how can you do it how can you do it you can do something like x and inside square bracket name what it will do it will return you sanket right or you can do something like x dot name then also it will return you sanket let me show you guys let me show you guys so you can do objects demo dot js let x is equals to name sanket age 24 let y is equals to name sarthak age 24 and now if you do console dot log x and inside square bracket you put a name and then you console dot log y dot name right if you run it one second if you run it uh, 
Oh, sorry, my bad. Now, inside square bracket, whenever you have to access inside square bracket, you have to put it like a string that you have to keep in mind. If now you run it, see, we are able to access it, right? So, if you want to access it like with a dot operator, you can do y dot name. So, technically, you are trying to access the key name of the object y, or you can put a pair of square brackets and inside the square bracket, put the key in the form of a string. So, this is actually in the form of a string. Okay, so put key as a string, put key as a string, it returns the value, right, it returns the value. So this is how you can actually access an object. Now, the question that should come to your mind is, are objects mutable like can i update them so yes you can so if you do like y dot name now let's say you do tanmay and now you do console dot log y the whole object and if you run it see the object has been updated to tanmay right previously the value was sarthak now you are able to update it to tanmay so objects are mutable you can say yes and this is we can how we can update the object update the object right okay so now what we have learned this is how you create the object this is how you access any value using the key right so every time in objects you have to make sure that let me write a note here from key you can access values but not vice versa right that is from a value you cannot access a key from a value you cannot access a key this is very important why we cannot access a value from a key so this answer you will realize later when in advanced data structures and algorithms you will learn hashing but a simple ex one more simple explanation that exists is in an object keys are unique keys are unique but multiple keys multiple different keys can have same values can have same values in an object right for example for example you can even do something like marks is also 24 so the age key and the marks key both has a same value 24 if you do x dot 24 then which key you will return that will be a problem right so that's why you can always access values from a key from key you can access the values but not vice versa so this is how you create an object this is how you access the keys and using the keys you access the values and this is how you update the object inside JavaScript. Now, maybe if you already have an object created, you want to add a new property. How to add a new property to an already created object? You can, let's say I want to add a property marks inside x so what you can do is you can do something like x dot marks is equals to let's say 100 so it's like just assigning a value to a key marks so if marks key is present it will update it right for example name was present so it updates the name otherwise it adds it so marks key was not present so it will add it or you can do something like x of let's say company is equals to google okay now if you do console dot log x similar thing right either you can use this dot in order to access the key or again the same square bracket followed by a string see now you have marks and company added as a key value pair inside x so this is like the essence this is the essence of updating the whole object that you want to add a property to the object right Maybe you want to delete a property, delete a key value pair. 
what you can do there is a key uh, there is a delete operator so we can use delete operator you can write something like delete and let's say you will write x dot name right and if you do console dot log x and if you run it see the name property is gone from x there is no name property now so you just deleted the name property so this is how you can delete a property or i would say delete a key value pair altogether all you have to do is use the delete operator along with object dot key whatever key you want to delete from the corresponding object just mention that and that's how you add a new key value pair or delete an old key value pair from an object so in, in order to understand the working of objects and the syntax this is going to be a good question the question just says that you have been given a string you have to print number of occurrences of each unique character of a string so in a string there are multiple characters some character might get repeated also some character might not so for every unique character you have to print the number of occurrences or the frequency of it so a is occurring two times so here you can see so we print a space two j is occurring only once so you print j space one right this is how you do it now what can be a simple way to do it how about we somehow store frequency of each unique character we somehow store frequency of each unique character because at last we kind of like want a mapping right j is having a frequency 1 a is having a frequency 2 v is having a frequency 1 s is having a frequency 1 and so on and so forth so we kind of like want a mapping based structure we need a mapping based structure and in javascript we have objects right objects can map a key to a value objects can map a key to a value right so how about if let's say you have a javascript you have javascript this is the string given to you what you can do is you can create a new object let's call this object as frequency map object okay frequency map initially the object will be empty of course object is empty right because i have not started the algorithm so i don't know the frequency of any character okay cool what i can do i can iterate over the string how can you iterate over the string you can keep a variable let's say i okay so i is pointing to j i is pointing to j what you can do is you can check did we already make an entry of j inside frequency map can you see an entry of j inside frequency map frequency map is empty right currently the frequency map is empty so there is no key equal to j right because the mapping is empty can i say that what i'm trying to say is the first character that i'm pointing out is j we have a frequency map object with us right why we have kept an object with us because we want to somehow store frequency corresponding to a character so let's say something like a 2 j 1 something like this we want to store so we kind of like need a mapping based structure right and in javascript we have a mapping based structure which actually maps the key to a value so we created an object we name this object as frequency map and currently it is empty it's completely empty we will one by one go to each character and we will try to make an entry inside the frequency map so first character is j first character is j do you see an entry of j inside frequency map do you see an entry of j inside frequency map no there is no entry right currently the frequency map is empty no entry at all so if there is no entry of j how about you create an entry and we know that if we already have created an object how can we add a key value pair so we will add a key value pair as j one because currently we have only found first occurrence of j okay then we will move ahead 
नाउ आई इज पॉइंटिंग टू ए इज ए प्रेजेंट इन द फ्रीक्वेंसी मैप इज देर एनी अकरेंस ऑफ ए डू यू सी एनी अकरेंस ऑफ ए बिकॉज नाउ फ्रीक्वेंसी मैप हैज सम डेटा वी हैव जे एज द की डू यू सी ए एज द की डू यू सी ए एज द की नो सो हाउ अबाउट यू एड ए एज द की विद वन एज द फ्रीक्वेंसी बिकॉज वी हैव जस्ट फाउंड फर्स्ट अकरेंस ऑफ ए राइट then you go to v new character is v do you see any entry of v in the frequency map do you see any entry of v no so we will create an entry because this is the first occurrence so i'll just put a one here okay now things will get interesting now we are pointing to a now if i ask a question do you see an entry do you see an entry of a inside the frequency map do we have an entry of a inside the frequency map yes and if we have an entry a how about we update it so i will do plus 1 i'll try to increment it so we technically here incremented it incremented the value okay so now we have a frequency of a as 2 and we move forward we got s do we have an entry of s inside the frequency map no so we'll create an entry of s with the frequency 1 and so on the loop will go on this is how the loop will keep on moving and at last i can just print the frequency map because you can see in the frequency map we have j1 a2 v1 s1 so i can just print the frequency map right so how can i write a code for it what you can do you can say let frequency map is equals to an empty object right initially empty because currently we don't have any mapping right and then we can iterate we can iterate till str dot length minus 1 and then we can do i plus plus okay this loop we already have seen right this loop we have already seen you start from index 0 you go till str dot length minus 1 now you can also update it you can also update it you can also update it in one way how you can update it using using a for of loop so if you use a for of loop so let's say const character of str right so you have access to the character makes sense right now you check if frequency map is having an entry of char or not so this is the syntax right using which you can fetch the data this is the free syntax using which if you pass a key inside the frequency map you will get the value see if you want to actually read the data you say x of name or this dot name so either you can do frequency map of character or you can do frequency map dot character anything you can do right anything you can do now either the character will be present or it will not be present what happens if you try to do console dot log key not present if you try to access a key which is not present for example if i try to access y dot college now college key is not present right y dot college is not present so if something is not present it should give you undefined right if you run it see it is printing undefined and undefined is a falsy value so if the character is not present if character is not present we have a false why you have a false because this value will return undefined and undefined is a falsy value because it will convert it to a boolean otherwise if you have anything else let's say you have a number 1 2 3 anything that means the character was present so if the character is present you will just update it how do you update it you say frequency map dot character 
plus equals to one you increment the frequency otherwise you just add an entry of frequency map dot character equals to one this is where you update the frequency this is where you add a new key value pair and at last after the for loop i can just print the frequency map that's it so if i just write this code frequency of char in a string dot js right let's say let str is equals to javascript let's create a frequency map object initially empty we will iterate over the string so const character of str we will check if frequency map dot character if it is present if present update it you will do frequency map dot character plus equals to one if it is not present if not present add it so frequency map dot character is equals to one and then we can outside the for loop let's just print the frequency map that's it same thing that i wrote here is the exact thing that i wrote here okay now let's see if it works or not first of all let's see if it works or not if you run it see it doesn't work it doesn't work why because this syntax has a problem this kind of a syntax has a problem when you try to do x dot name it tries to give you the key and the key was name as it is name right but in the frequency map if you do frequency map dot care although care is a variable but it will not detect it as a variable it will not detect it as a variable instead it will try to detect it as a key care c h a r key only so that's why it's lot preferable if you are using variables you use a square bracket based syntax you use a square bracket based syntax because this dot based syntax in these kind of cases create a problem if now you run it you can see everything is working as expected j1 a2 v1 s1 c1 r1 i1 p1 t1 you can even do something else for example um let's say something like this and if you run it n2 i2 t1 in any order you can just print the order doesn't matter for us and this is how you can find the frequency of different characters and print the frequency of different characters in javascript so if you try to quickly debug the string is nitin we start the loop from here so the char variable the char variable is n you are going to check is the frequency map having the char variable is the frequency map having the char variable frequency map is empty so it is not having anything right so we will go inside else and we will make an entry for the char variable so now you see you saw an entry of n colon 1 okay cool we move ahead now char variable is i see char variable is i here okay you check is i present in the frequency map no so you create an entry from line number nine see you created an entry for i1 okay is t present char is t now char is equals to t now is t present in the map no you again create an entry t1 fair enough now things will get interesting now char is equals to i again char is equals to i again is i present already in the map so frequency map of i previously when previously we encountered i frequency map of i was giving what it was giving undefined that's why we went a false and we went inside else but this time it is going to return what what is frequency map of i frequency map of i is one one is a true the value that means if check will be true and you will go inside six line number six and you will what you are doing you are going to increment the value 
so see now you have i2 now you have i2 then again character is n see the character is n you will check is n present inside frequency map yes n is present again a true the value you increment it and you can see finally you got this in the frequency map finally you'll just print it and that's it so this is how you are going to actually use objects this is a fairly good example to actually visualize the use cases of objects so there is something called as string interpolation right at different point of time you will hear this word string interpolation or maybe something like templatized strings right so this concept is not just uh, relevant to javascript but this concept exists in different languages also for example in ruby also in python also this uh, concept actually exists and it's quite handy as well right so what it has to actually do uh, and why do we want to use this do this uh, let's try to understand that so let's say currently let's say if i have a variable let x is equals to or let's say let name is equals to sanket i'm just giving you a hypothetical situation right or let's take any name let's say um, let's um, say name is equals to john okay and then let's make one more variable let's say name uh, company is equals to amazon okay now let's say if i have to print something like uh, i want an output such that it should write something like john works in amazon if i have to print a string like this what will i do i will say console.log console.log i will first of all say name comma then i'll put a string works in and then i'll put a, uh, a variable name company right i will do something like this so what will ha what will happen name is already a variable so it will say john then after a space it will print works in and then after a space it will print the company that is amazon right this thing we will get but for this we have to do a lot of effort right we have to like make a variable then comma comma then put some string and so on and so forth and let's say instead of just printing instead of just printing let's say we want to store it also let's say we want to store this string john works in amazon such that the john is inside the variable name and amazon is inside the variable company we want to store it somewhere for example something like this let str is equal so now we want to store it in a variable how we will store it we will say something like name plus works in plus company right so we'll try to take the help of string concatenation operation that helps us because name is already a string works in is already a string company is already a string when two strings are operated with a plus operator then they are concatenated this is something that we can do but to do all of this to do all of this like either you can if you want to print you will print it like this or if you want to store it you will try to you are, what you are do, trying to do is here you already have a string name you already have a string works in you are first of all concatenating both of them and creating a new string something like john works in right and then you are concatenating it with the company so this is something that you are doing so there is a shorthand that we can do here what you can do you can say something like let string one is equals to you can make an interpolated string you can make a make an interpolated string right so how you can make an interpolated string currently in javascript to prepare a string we use double quotes or we can use single quotes right using single quotes or double quotes any one of these we can prepare strings right so we can either use double quotes or we can use single quotes for javascript 
right there is one more way there is one more way you can create a string using back tick using back tick right this back tick character on your keyboard is present on the key where you will see this sign and a back tick so this is technically a back tick this is the back tick right so on your keyboard it must be to the left of the key one right on your keyboard it will be to the left of the key one right or you can say below escape also so this is the back tick character this is the back tick character so you can put a back tick also and then also you can prepare a string inside javascript so technically there is one more way to prepare string not just using single quotes or double quotes but you can also use back ticks now what helps what back ticks helps us to do is they helps us to prepare interpolated string now what is interpolated string interpolated string means interpolated string means string means we can put expressions or expressions or we can say we can embed expressions directly inside the string which will be evaluated during runtime right so what we can do is inside the string we will be able to embed variables or some expressions when i say expression then something that can be evaluated for example a variable or some evaluative expressions so something like this you can do so if you want to embed a variable what you can do you can write dollar you can write a dollar and inside a pair of curly brace you can put the variable name or expression so let's say i want to put name so i'll say dollar name then you'll write some normal text works in and then you will again put a dollar and then you can write company right let's shift it a bit company now what will happen here is it will look like that you are preparing a string so you might feel that if i'll do console.log of str1 you will see this same thing getting printed on the console but that's not the case why because first of all you have initialized this string using a back tick that means this string qualifies to become an interpolatable string a single quoted or a double quoted string cannot become interpolated string only a back tick based string can become a interpolated string now what dollar sign does is dollar along with a pair of curly brace dollar along with a pair of curly brace what they mention is that inside the curly brace together with dollar with a pair of curly brace mentions that inside the curly brace there is a valid javascript expression that you can evaluate so here you can see it is a name right so it will not treat it as a string name instead it will say that okay there must be some variable with the variable name as name see and we have a variable with a variable name as name then there must be some variable with a variable name as company right so if you will try to print it it will print something john works in amazon it is going to print something like this it is going to print something like this so let me show you a demo let me show you a demo so that you can get a better clarity on this so so let's say if i prepare let name is equals to sanket or let's let's take an example let's name is equals to john let company is equals to amazon and now i try to prepare a string so i first of all use it a use it using a back tick so see i have put a back tick if you close take a close look here it is a back tick whereas the above strings are with double quotes okay you can even have with a single quote also so let me show you all the possibilities so single quote also can be there but this is a back tick okay inside the back tick what you can do if you write dollar with a pair of curly brace see it makes it a bit yellow right the color syntax uh, syntax color is a bit different and now you can put any expression for example name and then you can write any string outside the pair of curly brace for example works in then let's say dollar and then you can write company 
works in company and you can write some other java valid javascript expression also for more than or let's say let years is equals to two so for more than let's say dollar years and then you can put a full stop now if you carefully see whatever is a normal text is inside green whereas whatever is a javascript expression is inside yellow with a white so your text editor will already do the code highlighting now if you do console.log str if you do console.log str and if you run it see what are we getting john works in amazon more than two more than two and we should write years now let's write years and let's run it again so john works in amazon for more than two years so now what you are able to see is that right that when you actually run this file during the runtime what happens is this dollar name actually evaluates what is the value of the variable name which is john and actually put that value john here then it evaluates what is the value of the variable company and put that value here which is amazon then it evaluates whatever what is the value of the variable years which is a two in number and that number it actually converts into a string and then put it here and you can write any valid javascript expression for example if you do something like let example is equals to interpolated example dollar let's write something like 2 plus 3 minus 9 okay so 2 plus 3 minus 9 is a valid javascript expression right you can evaluate it so if you do console.log example and if you run it see interpolated example it gives you minus 4 so what it does during the runtime it checks 2 plus 3 is 5 5 minus 9 is minus 4 so it actually appends minus 4 there so this is the use case of interpolated string inside us otherwise what i would have done in a, in a normal way i would have done something like interpolated example right plus uh, something like val variable and inside the val variable i could have initialized 2 plus 3 minus 9 these two lines i would have required right in order to create a string like this but now using string interpolation you can put valid javascript expression inside the string and during runtime when the string will be evaluated these expression will be evaluated then and there for example let's say later i change the name of the company to google and now if i try to run the code see now it is going to be google because initially the value of company was amazon then later during runtime it got updated to google and hence we have the value as google so this is a very handy way to actually uh, log your data and put things inside a string because it saves a lot of time for us and it definitely looks cool and it is very intuitive that what will happen is inside the dollar along with the curly brace whatever expression you have written during the runtime that expression will be evaluated that expression can be a mathematical expression or a variable name or some other valid javascript piece of code this is what string interpolation is so till now we have talked about a lot of different data types we also talked about objects right we have we already know that a structure like this exists since javascript for example if you say let x is equals to you can create an object like this you can put name for example as john you can put company as let's say what microsoft you can say salary is let's say what forty thousand or for like something like this right some some random figure i'm putting then let's say age is 24 right and uh, city that they work is in bangalore or bengaluru right and uh, let's say team that they work is in uh, let's say azure azure storage right so i'm just preparing a random object right and what else what else um designation designation is software engineer okay so let's say this is a simple object that i have created okay now if i have to print this object generally what i do that you might have also seen me doing is i just print it console.log x if i run it it just prints the whole object 
it just prints the whole object that's it but what if what if i want to individually access all of the keys i just want to get the access to all of the keys i don't want anything else i don't want anything else i just want to get all the keys that are present i don't even want the values i just want all the keys so what you can do is there is a function that you can execute so let keys of x is equals to you can do something like object dot keys right so this function so this capital o object so this is also a javascript object right this object is by default prepared inside javascript environment when we will learn more details around prototypal inheritance and everything which is an advanced topic then i will tell you what is the significance but for the timing you can understand that there are few objects that are already prepared inside javascript right so this object is already prepared inside javascript and this object has a function keys okay inside this function you can just pass your own prepared javascript object what it will do is it will return an array of the keys of x so if i do console.log keys of x and if i run it you can see we are getting an array and inside that array only all the possible keys are there see name company salary age city name designation can i say that right so if you want to get access to all of the keys then we can use something like this right so it will return you an array of keys returns you an array of keys but now you might think that okay sir i want if you were giving me access to all of the keys how about if i want to get access to all of the values so you can say let values of x let's initialize a variable and there is a function called as object dot values and you can pass your uh, own custom object x what it will do it will return an array of the values of x so if i do console dot log values of x and if i run it you can see i'm getting an array i'm getting an array see these square brackets and inside that array all the values just the values not the keys just the values that is john microsoft this number 24 bengaluru azure software engineer all of the values i'm just getting so if inside an object you want to just get access to all of the keys you can use something like object dot keys if you want to get access to all of the values just all of the values you can get access to using object dot values but what if you want to get access of both what if you want to get access of both let entries of x is equals to so there is a function called as object dot entries and you can pass an pass a variable x which is an object so what it will do it will return an array of arrays it will return an array which is which is going to contain an array of the key value pair so if i run it console.log sorry entries of x if i run it now you can see what we are getting it's an array inside that array because arrays are heterogeneous in javascript heterogeneous means it can have different type of values right so here we have all the values of the same type which is technically an array only so inside an array we have multiple different arrays multiple different arrays multiple different arrays so you can see inside an array we have different arrays each of length 2 see this name comma john is an array of length 2 company comma microsoft is an array of length 2 salary comma 40 or let's say 40 lakhs is in uh, an array of length 2 age comma 24 is an array of length 2 and so on and so forth so object dot entries will return you an array of arrays where you will get access to the key also and the value also you will get the access to the key also and the value also now having said that if let's say if let's say i just copy this object here if i just copy this object here and if i do for 
const entry in object dot entries of x so you remember right the for in loop right uh, or uh, i talked about the for of loop right i talked about the for of loop so there exists a for in loop also so let's first of all use the for of loop then i will introduce the for in loop also so if you remember the for of loop the for of loop we will we were able to put on strings and arrays right now object dot entries also return you an array so technically we can loop over it as well right and if you do console dot log entry and run it you can see each individual element of the object dot entries array is getting printed and each individual entry is an array itself so you are getting something like this you are getting something like this right so that's how you can do it but there is one more way there is one more way if you want to this is how you can loop over an object if you want to loop over an object you can do something like for of loop with object dot entries but there is one more way there is one more way using you can do this that is the for in loop there is one more way using for in loop how you can do this you can say for const keys in x so what for in loop can do is if you do console dot log keys it will give you access to all of the keys see you are getting access to all of the keys so for in loop will help you to actually loop over the keys for in loop actually helps us loop over keys you can loop over keys using object dot keys also but for in is a good shorthand but now you might feel that i have access to the keys how can i get access to the values you know how to extract value from an object you can just say x of keys can i say that so now if you run it you can see along with the key we have the value along with the key we have the value because x of keys will return you the corresponding value of that corresponding key so this is one more way in which you can actually loop over your objects so if i show you the documentation from mdn let me bring in the documentation from mdn so you can see the foreign statement iterates over enumerable string properties of an object that is the keys right so let's say you have an object like this if you do const property in object and as you can see interpolatable string is there so property is actually the key and when you do object and with a square bracket property this is the value so if you run it you're getting a colon one b colon two and so on and so forth right so this is the for in loop so along with for of loop for of loop is more or less for strings and object as uh, strings and arrays but if you want to directly loop over an object you can do for in loop so this is like technically very efficient and a very shorthand syntax we have so there are multiple ways in which you can actually loop over the object and these are few of those ways so this is a very simple question in front of us all we want to do is that uh, we are given an array of strings we have to print all the unique strings in the array right so you can see abc is present twice so you want to print abc only once hello is present once you print hello once c is present twice you print c once d is present twice you print d once a simple approach can be what you can do is you can prepare an object inside that object i have already told you right in object keys are always unique there is no repetition of keys keys are always unique so let's try to make these strings as unique keys right and at last we will just print those keys for example you can make something like a b c comma anything uh let's say you can put any value true false anything you can put then hello colon true then c colon true d true then a b c comes again so you are not going to do much because abc already has an entry c comes again you don't need to do anything d comes again you don't need to do anything right and then you can just print all the keys so this kind of a preparation we can do so let's say let's say we have uh, an array let arr is equals to abc hello c d 
C A B C D. Okay. So what you can do is you can prepare an object. Let's say it's an initially an empty object. Now we can iterate over the arrays. A shorthand to iterate over the arrays can be the for of loop. So const element of ARR. What you can do is that you can say if not obj of element then you can make an entry on obj of element is equals to true right else you don't need to do anything else you don't need to do anything so let's bind it in a curly brace pair of curly brace and that's it so if the element is not present as a key add that element as a key and the true as the value at last you can just iterate over your object you can say const key in obj console.log key and that's it if you run it you can see we are getting all the unique keys from the object so this can be a very simple approach to actually solve this question so arrays are very interesting in javascript right they they open a plethora of options in front of us and they get like if you actually try to do something like this if you try to check the type of array one second if you go and try to check type of an array so if you do type of an array you see you get an object so technically in javascript arrays are just object so you can say they are just custom objects right there are some modified objects one type of object is something like this that you see right one type of object is something like this that you see but arrays are also objects so we can write it like this arrays are also custom objects in js you can say that the index of the element is the key and the element itself is the value for example for example if you write something like one so let's say a b c d e f g h i so you can write something like this right that at index 0 you have a b c right and then at index 1 you have d e f and then at index 2 you have g h i so something like this so you can represent it something like this so arrays are technically like custom objects only right when you will try to understand more in-depth analysis around objects and prototypal inheritance and everything you will get to know more around things around objects but currently our agenda is a bit different so we want to actually discuss about a lot of functions that comes up with arrays right so there are a lot of functions that arrays got and we are going to discuss about them in javascript specifically right so the first function that we have is the map function right so we are we are going to talk about the map function okay it's very simple and quite an interesting function to be very honest right so before you actually start understanding these functions there is a concept called as higher order functions so we need to first of all understand the concept of higher order functions higher order functions okay what are higher order functions so these are functions these are functions that depends and operate on other functions right they de uh, depend and operate on other functions higher order functions take another function as an argument they take another function as an argument they take another function as an argument and then execute the logic and then execute the logic for example for example let's say if i have a function gun if i have a function gun and let's say i have some logic there 
and let's say I have a function fun and the function fun expects this function gun as an argument and after some logic it tries to execute the function gun so technically the function fun becomes a higher order function right so whenever I say higher order function so these are those functions which take another function as argument they take another functions as arguments okay it's not like a nested thing it's not a nested thing it's like completely outside each other they just expect each other as argument so if I show you the MDN doc so MDN higher order functions right so a function that returns a function or takes a function as an argument is called higher order function. So I gave you one example where it is taking the function as an argument. There is one more criteria to become higher order function. So they either take another function as an argument or return, return a function as argument or they return a function as argument. That's the main part, right? So either they can take an argument or we should not say they should return as argument, but they can return a function, right? So either they take a function as an argument or they maybe return a function. This type of functionality is available with JavaScript. Later we will see how we can make custom such functions also. Uh, so these functions are called, called as higher order functions. So in order to understand higher order functions, we should first of all take a look at some already built in higher order functions. Then later point of time, when we will be having more clarity around things around scopes and closures, then we will prepare our own higher order functions, right? But first of all, let's try to understand some custom inbuilt higher order functions, right? So one of the higher order functions is a map function, which comes with an array, right? It comes with an array. So map is a higher order function available with arrays map is a higher order function that is available with arrays right so what it does is what it does is it returns it returns a new array or first of all let's say it takes a function as an argument it takes a function as an argument and it returns an array in which every value is actually populated and let's say that the function that it takes an argument is let's say a function f right so let's say we takes a function f as an argument and then it returns an array in which every value every value is actually populated by calling function f with original array element as argument. So it might seem confusing to you, but let me show you an example that will clarify everything. So let's say we have an array. So let's say const array. Let's say const array is equals to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Okay. And let's say I write a function square. What the square function does is it takes an element as an argument and it just returns square of that element, element into element. So what it is returning returns square. Okay. Now what I can do is I can do something like ARR dot map array has a function map. So when you have to call the map function on an array, you can use this dot operator. So it says that on the array object, it has a map function call that map function. Now this map function takes a function as an argument. So I've written a function already here, right? Square. So I can pass this square function as an argument and it will return an array. See, it returns a new array. So I can catch that array here. So const result is equals to arr dot map. If I'll do console dot log result, if I'll do console dot log result, let's see what happened. Let's see what happened. If you run it, you're getting one, four, nine, 16, 25. 
1625. So let me tell you what exactly happened. Step by step. First thing. Map is a higher order function. What is the definition of a higher order function? A higher order function can take a function as an argument or return a function. Either one of the criteria should be fulfilled. Can you see the map function? See, it is a map function and it is taking square. What is square? Square is a function in itself. So it is taking square as an argument. Square is a function passed as an argument. And can I say that? Hence, map is a higher order function. First thing, I hope this point is clear. So it says that it takes a function as an argument. So I have passed function as an argument. Okay. Then what does it return? What does this map function return? It returns an array. So you can see it is returning an array. I'm able to print that array. See result array. I'm able to print that array. What is the content of that array? The content of that array is populated by passing each value from the original array. So this is the original array. So let's say when you passed one in the square function, if you pass one in the square function, what will square function return? One into one, one. So see, let me write it here. So if you pass square of one, it is going to return one. Then the next element is two. So if you pass square of two, it is going to return a four. Okay. Then the next element is three. If you pass square of three, it is going to return a nine. Then the next element is four. So if you pass square of four, it is going to return 16. And the final element is five. If you pass square, of 5 then it is 25 so what is happening the original array every element of the original array is one by one passed inside square so let me write it here every element of the original array is passed one by one in the argument function f see Every element of the original array, I am one by one passing inside square. Can I say that? And then, and then, whatever is the output for each individual element, we populate that output in an array. So, now see for each element what is the output for one the output is one for two it is four for three it is nine for four it is 16 for five it is 25 so we just populate that output one by one in the array and that is your output so technically what map does is map internally iterates or loops over every element of the given original array pass that element in the argument function f and then store the returned value and store the returned value inside an array. This is the functionality of map function, right? So you can even change. For example, let's say now I write a function q. Right, I write a function q which takes an argument x and it returns x into x into x. This time I'm trying to do a q. If I will do cons, const cube result is equals to arr dot map of cube and I do console dot log cube result and run it. You can see now every element is cubed. Can I say that? Every element is cubed. Let me write one more function. Function is even or odd. Let me write a function is even or odd. So I'll pass a value x. If x mod 2 is 0, then I will return even. 
else I will return odd, right? So let's say if I do const even odd is equals to arr dot map of is even or odd. Now what is going to happen? See, if I do arr dot map of is even or odd, what is the function f? Function f is function f is the argument function. What is the argument function here? Is even or odd. So what will happen? Map will loop over every element of the original array. What is the every element of the original array? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It will one by one loop over every element. Then pass that element in the argument function f. So first is in the function is even or odd. You are going to pass 1. Then you are going to pass 2. Then you are going to pass 3. Then you are going to pass 4. Then you are going to pass 5. Then for each returned value. So let's say if you pass 1 inside is even or odd. So is 1 even or odd? So 1 is odd. So for 1 it will return odd. For 2 it will return even. So for every value this function is even or odd will return something. So it is going to store that value inside an array and we can print that array. So if I run it, you can see 1 was odd, 2 was even, 3 was odd, 4 was even, 5 was odd. This is how you have to do. One very piece of in piece of important information that you have to keep in mind is I am just writing the name of the function. I am not calling the function. See, I am not putting a pair of parentheses. This is calling the function. I am just putting the name of the function. That is equivalent to saying that we are going to pass this reference of the function here. If you will put a pair of parentheses that a lot of students make a mistake, then you are actually calling the function here only. That we don't have to do. That we don't have to do, right? Whenever you, at any point of time in your code, if you add somewhere you do something like this, then you are trying to call a function immediately. We don't want to call a function. I just want to pass a function. If I want to pass a function, I will just put the name of the function. Then internally map will handle everything. Map will technically loop and then just put it all over it, right? So maybe we can later, when we will try to write our own higher order functions, we can write our own custom implementation of a map. But this is how map works in JavaScript. If you have this question in your mind that how will I know where to use map, then in any situation, if you have to do an operation, so let me write it here as well. When to use maps. In any situation, when we have to do an operation on every element of the array and store the result of each operation, map can be a good option. Map can be a good option. Let me give you a real life example. For example, let's say we are building Flipkart and we have array of products. We have array of products, right? Now let's say in this array of products, so product can be an object, array of product objects, right? So what I have to do is for each product object, let's say I want to get the product name. So what, what, can, I, what can I do? On this array, I can do the map. I can do a map and then fetch object of each product and that in that object, fetch the key name and then just store that in an array and I will get a list of all the product names. So this can be a real life example for arrays.map. So guys, there can be different ways and different places in which you can actually use a map. But uh, sometimes let's say you have an array. So const new array is equals to 98765. Okay. Let's say I write a function print. Okay. I write a function print. And it takes two arguments, element comma index, right? And what I'm going to do, I'm going to just say return a string. So this is an interpolated string element at index dollar. You can say this as IDX, for example, 
at dollar idx is element okay let's say i'm going to return this string so you can see this function has two arguments element comma index so if you do something like const result 2 is equals to new array dot map and pass this function print and actually pass this function print right so what's going to happen what's going to happen let's see so if the function that you are passing takes two arguments then the first argument is going to be the actual element and the second argument is going to be the index of the element so let me write it here if the function that we are passing takes two arguments passing in map takes two argument then first argument will be accessing the actual value second argument will be accessing index of that value okay so now if you try to do printing of result to and run it now you can see you are getting an array and what are the details of this array let's see element at index 0 is 9 element at index 1 is 8 element at index 2 is 7 element at index 3 is 6 element at index 4 is 5 and you can see how did we get it i created a new array and i did new array dot map and passed the function print in the function print i have instead of one argument see previously every time i was just having one argument c cube c is even or odd but this time i have two arguments so if you pass two arguments in the function that you are passing to map if you have two arguments there then the first argument will be the actual element and the second argument will be idx so here what map is doing map is calling here let me write it here map is looping over every element here map is looping over every element and then passing element comma index in the function print in the function print so what is happening in the function print you first of all pass element as 9 and index as 0 then you pass element as 8 and index as 1 see index as 1 element as 8 and so on and so forth so this can be one way in which if you are looping over the array and maybe for your logic you need the access of the index of the element also apart from just the element if you need the access of the index of the element also then you can have it using maps right so you can read about different use cases of map these are like two common use cases that i talked about different use cases of map you can actually take a look at uh, the mdn docs you might not be able to understand what is prototype currently i'll talk about prototypal inheritance later but this is how we actually do all of these things you can read this doc whatever you are able to understand don't worry if there is something that you are not able to understand after the advanced part of javascript you will be able to get that so that is how map works with indexes in javascript let's say i want to write my own custom map function so let's say i write a function it will not be exactly like arr dot map because how you can call it with arr dot map i will tell you in like after prototypal inheritance but let's say if i write a function custom mapper custom mapper okay this function takes array as argument and let's say it takes a function as argument this function is similar to the function f that you pass here okay let's say i do something like this for let i equals to 0 i less than arr dot length i plus plus let's make a result array empty array right now if you want to push an element if you want to insert an element inside an already prepared array you can use a function called as push so you can say result dot push and then whatever is the output of func function of arr at i 
see so this function i'm passing and i'm calling this function with arr at i right and at last i'm returning the result and let's say i'm also going to pass the index i and let's say i'm going to pass the index i also okay cool now let's say you say const value is equals to custom mapper let's pass our array what is the array new arr and let's pass the function as print and let's say console dot log value console dot log value if i run it can you see we are getting exactly the same output in both of the cases the first output is coming from what new arr dot map the second is coming from our custom mapper right the syntax is a bit different you are not doing new arr dot custom mapper because you are not ready for that syntax but let's say if you have a similar implementation that or if you have a question that who is handling how the element and index should be passed that handling is written inside this custom mapper that means for the case of map that logic is written inside this map right that the first element passed inside this function will be this element and then the index so how you are actually doing it you are passing the array you are passing the function you are looping over the array in line number 89 looping over the array and then if you already have an array if you already have an array let me even show you this if you have an array a is equals to this you can do a dot push one right and if you check a now a has an element one if you do a dot push two a has an element one comma two so it, the push function adds the element to the last so what element i'm going to add at the last whatever is the result result of the return value of the function call and in this function call i'm passing the element first and then the index so this implementation is written inside my custom mapper and similarly this implementation will be written inside map this is how you can make a mapper or a similar to map function which is 90 percent same the only difference is how you are actually calling it that's the theory around prototypal inheritance that is going to come up in the advanced part i hope this point makes sense to everyone so just like maps we have one more function inside arrays this function is called as the filter function filter is also a higher order function now everybody knows about higher order function these are those functions which takes a function as an argument or maybe return a function as the final value right so filter is also a higher order function filter also loops over the array elements right there is one special thing there is one special thing about filter that is the argument function f which we have to pass inside filter should always return a boolean right it should always return a boolean otherwise output will be converted to a boolean okay so it is also a higher order function just like maps filter is also a higher order function but the function that you are going to pass inside the filter that function should always return a boolean for example let's say you have an array okay let's say this is the array now let's say if i write a function odd even odd or even and i get an element x let's say if i i will return return x mod 2 double equal to 0 right i'm going to return this okay now you can see it is returning a boolean right it is check whether x is divisible by 2 or not if x is divisible by 2 it will return a true because x if x is divisible by 2 it will become 0 x mod 2 will become 0 and 0 is equals to 0 so returning a boolean right so when i will call arr dot filter the argument sh function should always return a boolean 
if it is not returning a boolean for example let's say instead of this you start returning something like abc something a string so it will try to convert that returned value into a boolean and i guess everybody knows how to boolean works right how the conversion to boolean works okay so this has a special property that every time this argument function should always return a boolean or the output will be converted to a boolean so what it does is filter loops over every element passes that element in the argument function and then if the output of this function call is true then it stores the original element in a new array otherwise doesn't add this element to the array so let's see what i'm trying to say so what it will do what a filter function will do it will one by one go to every element of the array it will one by one go to every element of the array every element will be passed inside this function so for example inside the odd or even function first i will pass one then i will pass two then i will pass three and so on and so forth for those elements for which this odd even function or whatever function you have passed is going to return a true those elements are going to be returned inside an array so if i just print the result array if i just print the result array you can see the output that i am getting is 2468 why 2468 let's see so first of all array is going to start looping over the array array dot filter will start looping over the array first element is 1 i will pass 1 inside odd or even i will pass 1 inside or odd, odd or even what is the value of 1 mod 2 one mod 2 is 1 and is 1 double equals to 0 is the value 1 equals to 0 so see in first iteration x is equals to 1 1 mod 2 is 1 then i ask is 1 equals to 0 no that means this is a false value and hence you can see 1 is not present in my final output but then the next element of the loop is 2 so x so you are going to pass 2 inside odd or even so 2 comes here what is sorry this is mod what is 2 mod 2 2 mod 2 is 0 so is 0 double equals to 0 is 0 double equals to 0 yes it is yes it is so you can see 2 is in the the original element 2 is in the final output then you pass 3 x becomes 3 what is 3 mod 2 it is 1 and then what is 1 equals to 0 no so you can see 3 is not in the output and so on and so forth so it will one by one it will just one by one go to every element pass that element inside your argument function if the processing of that element returns a true it will keep that element in your final output otherwise it will not keep it so this filter function actually filters out the element based on the function that you have given and as and that that the name also suggests that it is going to filter out the elements based on some condition and again filter is also a higher order function so the next higher order function that we are going to talk about is reduce now reduce is an interesting higher order function reduce is a higher order function available for arrays right available for arrays okay reduce also takes a function f as an argument right okay it also takes function f as an argument okay what reduce does is it one by one goes to 
every element of the array right say the current element is arr of i okay let's say the current element is arr of i reduce or let's say arr of 0 for example the 0th index reduce will pass this element right or we can say arr of 1 or just take a random uh, uh, index i so reduce will pass this element to the function f and accumulate the result and accumulate the result of further function calls with this particular result now this might be a bit confusing for a lot of people that's what i'm trying to talk about so the best way is to consider an example so let's say i have an array 1 2 3 4 5 6 okay let's say i do i write a function i write a function sum let's say i write a function sum right what i'm going to do inside the sum function let's say i want to sum up all the elements of the array like i want to add up all the elements of the array right maybe i want to add all the elements of the array or maybe i want to just take an average of all the elements something like this okay something like this i want to do in that case if i'm going to pass this sum function as the function f then it will take two arguments it will take two arguments first argument will be previous result second argument is going to be current value okay and we will say return previous result plus current value okay i'll tell you what is there but it takes two arguments and then what i can say is const result is equals to arr dot reduce and we will pass the sum function here if you see the output first of all let's see if the output is coming or not if you see the output output is 21 and if you add up all of these the answer is 21 so what is going on let's see so what happens is actually arr dot reduce starts from index 1 right let's see what is happening i just wrote the syntax let's see what is happening okay so what arr dot reduce will do is let's say this sum function whatever is the sum of the previous values that we have iterated for example let's say we have iterated up till now 3 2 and 1 for example we have iterated up to 3 2 and 1 so what is the sum of 3 2 1 the sum of 3 2 1 is going to be 6 so inside the previous result we are going to have 6 and let's say the current value is 4 so in the current value variable we will be having 4 so what is 6 plus 4 6 plus 4 is 10 now this 10 value will become the previous result and the current value will become 5 so if i try to print previous result comma current value right let's print let's see in every function call what is happening actually if you run it see arr dot reduce the first element that it is going to go at is going to be first element is going to be 2 see the current element is the current value is 2 what is the previous value 1 because sum up to the first index is just 1 so it will just keep the answer of the first index at the first index and the next value as current value then it returns previous value plus current value what is 1 plus 2 1 plus 2 is 3 so in the next function call the next function call is going to be The next function call is going to be 3. So in the next function call, the previous result is going to be 1 plus 2, that is 3. And the current value is going to be this particular 3. So the current value is coming from the element. Previous value is coming from the sum of the previous two values. Okay. Now, what is 3 plus 3? 3 plus 3 is 6. So if you go for the third element, in the next iteration, 
प्रीवियस रिजल्ट विल बी सिक्स हाउ थ्री प्लस टू प्लस वन इज सिक्स सो प्रीवियस रिजल्ट इज सिक्स एंड द करेंट वैल्यू इज फोर दैट इज दर्ड एलिमेंट नाउ वॉट इज सिक्स प्लस फोर वॉट इज सिक्स प्लस फोर सिक्स प्लस फोर इज टेन सिक्स प्लस फोर इज टेन सो इन द नेक्स्ट आइट्रेशन ऑफ द फोर्थ एलिमेंट वॉट इज द फोर्थ एलिमेंट फाइव इज द फोर्थ एलिमेंट सो इन द नेक्स्ट आइट्रेशन ऑफ फोर्थ एलिमेंट What is the previous result? Previous result is the sum of the all the previous values. Sum of all the previous values is ten. You can see ten. And what is the current value? Current value is five. That is the fourth element. You print them and then you do ten plus five. What is ten plus five? Fifteen. So in the next iteration of the fifth element, the fifth element is six, but the previous value is fifteen. How we got fifteen? Sum of all these values is fifteen. And along with that you pass six, and along with that you pass six. So fifteen plus six is twenty one. Fifteen plus six to twenty one. There is no element left inside the array, so the final result is going to be twenty one. So in simple terms, what reduce is going to do? It is going to accumulate the answer of all the previous indexes, and then with that answer combine the current value. Here the combination is done by addition, so we are doing addition. this is how reduce works right so if let's say i want to just take the product of all the values i can just do star if i want to take sum of all the values i can do plus something like this if you ask me what can be a real life application then i will say that let's say you have a cart you have a cart in that cart you have added a lot of products so for example you have added a iphone and then let's say you have added a case of the iphone okay and then let's say you have added a tempered glass okay so every product is let's say having a price let's say something like this case is having a price 500 tempered glass is having a price 300 right okay and then every product has a name so let's say iphone back cover okay and then here the name is tempered glass okay so let's say you are maintaining this cart inside your e-commerce project now you want to show the user the total amount that the user has to pay if they purchase the whole cart right so if i open flip cart in front of you right right and uh, let's do one thing let me just clear my old card right okay let's try to do a bit of shopping on flipkart okay so let's say i go to mobiles right i'll go to let's say pixel i add a pixel okay add to cart okay i've added pixel to cart okay then let's say let's go back then let's say try to add some back covers or something okay or maybe i want to add a charger let's add to cart a charger okay something went wrong maybe this is not available uh let's add a power bank instead okay so add to cart okay power bank has been added to cart can you see the total price is price of google pixel plus this plus this right so there are some extra things that are added so we can just remove that okay so nothing is added so you can see the total price is coming as 33976 right so something that like this if we have to do so let's say we will maintain an array so let's create an array cart and inside that array i'll keep all of these objects okay so price iphone price of back cover and price of tempered glass okay cool now i want to show the user the total price of the cart what i can do is const total price is equals to cart dot reduce and i can maybe sum and let's say add the prices i'll write a function add the prices so let's write a function add prices okay 
it will take two values previous result current value okay and then we'll say whatever is the previous result i will add current's values price because in the current value you will be having the current entry of the array current entry is an object so from that object i need to get the price okay add prices if i do console.log total price and if i run it so what are we getting we are getting something like this and just a second let's see so okay and we should also do something like this so we'll say previous result dot price plus current result dot price uh, we can do so because if you see here the previous result in the starting was the element itself right so here also it will be element itself so we'll say let new price is equals to previous result dot price plus current value dot price and then maybe we can return an object with price as new price okay and at last we'll say total price dot price so i'll tell you what is happening but let's see if it is summing up or not and you can see it is summing up so let's see what happens if you just want to see what is happening all you have to do is just console dot log your previous result and current value just console dot log them and everything will be clear to you let's see so the loop started what is the previous value previous value is the iphone object what is the current value it is the back cover object so you created a new price which is iphone's price plus back covers price what is iphone's price plus back covers price it is one step it's 10 lakhs so let's not keep it 10 lakh but okay 10 lakh plus 500 is something around 10 lakh 500 rupees and then you return a new object you return a new object with price as new price this new object will become the previous result in the next iteration see and in the next iteration the last element is tempered glass so the current value is tempered glass then you add previous result dot price which is this plus tempered glass price which is 300 total becomes 800 so you return an object here this total price is finally an object you can even print total price okay this total price is finally an object you can see here right total price is an object and from that total price i'm getting this price value so if you want to just sum up all of the things you can use something like reduce you might feel that i can just put a normal for loop on the cart and then also get the price yes you can then also get the price as i said these are utility functions these are available for you to like do a lot of things very easily but even if you want to do a custom implementation you can do that so this was how reduce function works.